today I have with me a fabulous Twitter artist, well, Twitter-based artist named DP Arts. That's at DP Arts on Twitter. This is kind of a momentous occasion because she has just reached 10,000 followers on Twitter, which I think is wonderful. How are you, DP? I'm okay, thank you. How are you doing? I'm okay as well. This is the second official episode. That's so. Oh. Yeah, it's what? still training wheels moment. Yes. No, I'm glad to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Cool. So, this is our first guest, which I'm very happy about. But we need to get into kind of the format. So, I want you to tell the audience who you are, what you do, and where can people find you? Perhaps besides Twitter, or if that's the only place, that's also cool. Well, my real name is Diana, but everyone calls me D. Um, I am a illustrator from London, but you know, born in Portugal, moved to London. I've uh, been doing. I've been drawing since I was a kid. Like literally, at four years old, I'm like drawing on napkins and everything. Um, so I'm an illustrator from London. I've been doing literally illustration and graphic design my whole life up until now. Uh, and yeah, um, people can find me on Twitter, Instagram. I was on, you can find me on Tumblr, but I don't use that a lot. It's mainly Instagram and Twitter and it's just DP Arts, which is D-E-E-P-E-E -E -E and then A-R-T-S. Yes. Oh, wonderful. Uh, I'm sure people watching this on YouTube will be able to see your name on the screen and I'll add a link on the description so there's no way they'd miss it. Um, I noticed, I wanted to start, before we go into the um, social media topic of the day, I wanted to talk to you about a few casual things. For example, I noticed when I first saw your stuff, it wasn't necessarily exclusively like the goopy style that people now know you for. There, there's, yeah. I noticed other things. What is the, um, is that is that now your trademark style or are you okay with it or what's going on? Yeah, I have gone through a lot of styles. I've literally gone from like round faces to two dots as eyes to like big like animated eyes. Um, I've tried Disney styles. I've tried anime. I've literally tried everything. Um, and my first serious social like media platform was Tumblr. And I got into the Jacksepticeye fandom and I was just doing so much of like Jacksepticeye art and stuff. And um, that's where people started like noticing me, I guess, on Tumblr. I think on Tumblr I got to like one. And then I stopped using it and I think I stopped at 2K. But um, yeah, my chat, my styles changed a lot. And then... I don't know my I just started experimenting and I think my first ever like official goopy art was the Vaporeon, Flareon and Jolteon one where they had the little energy stones in their mouths and people I don't know it caught people's attention they found it disturbing to be honest and <laughs> okay. I thought well this is this is really cool like people are really like I don't know they're just really liking it so then I experimented more And that's when I really started like splitting images apart and grouping everything up and putting things inside and people started responding like really positively positively to it. Um, I knew I had to expand. So I started going on Twitter and that became like my official style throughout my whole Twitter thing. Um, I haven't really brought any of my old style onto Tumblr. It kind of like died on Tumblr, my other style. But yeah, on on Twitter, I think that's what I'm mostly known for, I guess. Yeah. Uh, would you be okay if people requested, you know, to get your old stuff? I think it would be a nice um, engagement tool for you to continually get some content out there. Yeah, like, I have, um, what do you call it? If you look at my, like, facial cartoons, um, I have changed the eyes a lot. Um, I did have a trademark look on the eyes before um but i'm always reaching out to like my community to ask for like feedback and stuff and one of the feedback well one of the feedbacks that i got was like the eyes were like attractive and all like they would attract people but there's too much going on so i simplified it 
Um, so that was bringing one of the old styles from Tumblr, which I've changed. And now I'm much more happier with it with the help that I got from the community. Um, from time to time, I do post my old stuff on Twitter just to, you know, because a lot of artists are like, oh, I'm never going to find a style. Um, you know, my style's never going to settle down. And I'm just like, well, I went from drawing literally like two dots and like, smile to where I am now like your style will change I don't know if I know I might try to change my cartoons a bit but I think my group bot will be my trademark thing um, but I don't think I'll be bringing old styles from Tumblr back just because I think I've developed so much more from it Right. but yeah yeah I mean I, I really admire that of you, if I'm completely honest here, because, for example, I'm I'm so dead set on my current style, even if, if people don't like it as much as when I make yeah. fun art. So, yeah, that's I, I really like that you found something that you enjoy, but also that it's popular with people. That's really great. Yeah, it's not just because it's popular with people that I think. It's like, I don't know, it's very therapeutic to me. Mm -hmm. It looks like a mess, and, and it <laughs> looks traumatic and you know but i don't know it's just very therapeutic to me that style so i'm mostly just draw to chill out if that makes sense sure but i'm glad that bonus comes along that people like it as well so i'm happy about that yeah that's the right balance really also the fact that just because you're going to like a physical deconstruction of the characters and and like liquid People would immediately assume that you would go for like gore or blood, but you you veered out into more surrealism. So yeah, good job. I, yeah, I don't know. I don't do gore. <laughs> yeah. I've had people come up to me saying, "Hey, can you draw you know a head like split in half with brains coming out and stuff?" And I'm just like, "No, I'm not comfortable with that." I see. But yeah, no. Um, I have had the odd request, but mm -hmm. yeah, no gore. Interesting. Right, so a bit of um, speaking of art as a whole, do you have any famous artists, living or not living anymore, that, that inspire you in your work, or perhaps a cartoon or, or a series? I don't know, I have a, like, one of my favorite artists is Erin Hunting. She's the one who created Grumpy Cat. Mm -hmm. And she has, like, you know, for my cartoon, she inspired me to draw, like, you know, more cartoony big eyes. And really like over exaggerated facial expressions. But for my Gupa, I don't really take inspiration from anyone that I can think of. It's just literally something I created out of my head. Yeah. Um, but obviously, I look up to different artists. Um, I really like neon art that really attracts people. Um, one of the artists that I follow is like, her uh, name is Ch Chocovania. I, just, I fell in love with them, they're amazing. Um, like really bright. I just create whatever weird stuff comes in my head. To be honest. Yeah, it's cool. It's cool to hear the inspiration of other people because every artist, you know, your style or everyone's style is just like an amalgamation of everyone else you've ever seen, and plus a bit of yeah, like, yeah, yeah. the way your brain attempts to project your vision into a physical medium. I think that's really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Like every art form is going to be a chain link of a different one. Mm -hmm. And everyone's gonna take it's like artists like I see it as like building kind of like a Frankenstein monster kind of you're taking bits of it and just mashing them together and creating your own style and I guess that's how new styles are born um and that's what I really like about that it's cool you know like I don't draw gore or horror stuff but one of my favorite art styles is horror mangas. The really like messed up, sketchy, like horror faces. Like it's like my absolute one of my favorite styles, and it's completely different to what I do. Yeah. But I wouldn't do it myself. Um, is there a reason you can share as to why, or or is it private? Oh no no no! Just I don't really. I don't know. I don't really. I'm. I my imagination doesn't go that far. Because, I don't know, if you look at the monsters and creatures in, like, manga horror, they're, like, so far out there. And mm -hmm. I just don't have that kind of imagination, to be honest. <laughs> I see. But I appreciate, I really appreciate from afar. Right. But well, fair enough. 
Hey there, this is meant to be an intermission, but instead I want to take the opportunity to ask you, would it be better if this podcast had background music? Please let me know in the comments, or on Twitter. Thank you for enjoying the Wizard Tower Art Podcast. So, this is gonna be the topic of the day in regards mm -hmm. to social media, and we were talking a bit about art threads, which is actually a topic yeah. I touched on last episode. I like the idea of art threads, which I'm sure they have happened in years prior, but I'm relatively new to Twitter, and I noticed that mm -hmm. there was a big push for them last summer and autumn and winter, and yes. I just I just wanted to, even before people starting calling them out, I noticed a lot of people participating in art threads over and over and over, and not only were they filling their own feed with other people's art, which <laughs> in practical terms uh, uh, turns attention away from your own product, but yeah. also they were getting impatient because they were saying, okay, now I have triple the follower count, but no engagement. People don't like my art or, or retweet it or, or comment on it. So I wanted to talk about art threads with you because I've seen you over the weeks being very supportive of them, and I completely respect that you want to do that. I'm not saying you shouldn't, but I would like to know mm -hmm. what's your opinion on the, on the perhaps oversaturation of them and their and the effects of it to to the platform. I personally like art threads, but yes, um, it started it started last year, and I had no idea what was going on. Um, I didn't even know what art threads were. I think at the I think my new follower count was like a thousand when I first got into them, but those a thousands wasn't like artists and all these people following me. I literally no one really cared what I was doing. Um, but then and I wasn't really part of the art community. Like I, I wasn't really part of anything. I didn't even know how to use Twitter properly. I think the one thousand I got was just me telling people on Tumblr that I was on Twitter now and people oh. on Tumblr we were all just Tumblr kids coming over to Twitter basically we were just, we, I didn't know what I was going to turn into um, so all of a sudden uh, art thread, like art threads really blew up and all these artists were coming together to say hi here's my art and this is where you can find me and support me and stuff and I was drawing a lot um, and I was drawing for myself like I didn't really have commissions or anything so I was like, whoa. So I made a bunch of art and I joined a buttload of art threads. Like every art thread I could find, I was joining in. And then that people sort of got the idea of what I was going for. And I guess they wanted to see more of what I could do. So yeah, uh, I must have done like 20 art threads in a day. I was just throwing my art and like, hey, look at this. Look at this, everyone. <laughs> And then I got more followers, and from those art threads, I must have gotten to 3,000 people, I think. And that's when things started to get serious for me, and I felt like people expected more. Um, so in a sense, art threads is helped me get that boost of exposure and recognition, so I guess that's why I kind of respect them, because that's where I started meeting art friends and doing uh, art trades and really meeting people. And I was like, hey, I'm, you know, I have a good amount of followers now. I can actually help people. So I started doing art threads daily. Um, there was this, I did one art thread a week, which was the art, art threads, I think. And people kept joining me and they kept coming back to my page every Thursday to do art threads. So every Thursday, the art community would just get together, and I don't know, I really liked it. And I don't know, it just really helped me grow as an artist and meet new people, and I guess that's why I appreciate it so much. And that was my art thread story. It really, um, it really helps to have you who, who got boosted from them and who has the, the experience of knowing that you did blow up to, to tell me if... if I mean, if you feel that the engagement you've gotten from it is still going on and it's still genuine and it still helps, then I guess I, I have to concede that perhaps it's not as, um, what can I say, it? 
there it's not gonna be fake followers let's say i'm not saying that people are fake i'm saying that it's perhaps people who wouldn't be as interested to specifically look for your art with what you're saying i guess uh, in the long run it 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 is a good thing and i mean great we, we live in a time where anybody can just if they keep pushing they can get recognized without any sort of like publisher or marketer i think that's amazing That's really good. I don't think the art rights are like 100% amazing because there are those people that just post their art and don't even engage. Yeah. And that's one thing I push on my like page a lot is like, you know, you have this amazing community that will help you. And I I do know the people that help out. Like there are people I'm friends with, friends with that they will, you know, they will help you out. Um, But I also do know the people I just post and then run away and don't engage <laughs> and I guess that's kind of why everyone doesn't like art threads because they think it's all like that because you know they keep saying they keep seeing the same people and it's always the same art and everything yes. and I don't know maybe some people feel like it gets to a point where your art can't go any further than the people that are already following you if that makes sense and it doesn't help Because you're not getting fresh eyes on it. Yeah. And that I agree. Because, you know, even I feel the same. Like, with so many people that follow me, I feel like sometimes I can't get any fresh eyes on my art. But, you know, I just do these art threads because, you know, there's this simple format of, you know, post your art if you if you like, if you want to like, like, comment, retweet, you know. And, I don't know, I kind of got bored of it. I don't know, it became almost robotic because mm-hmm. you know, you're just sitting there and you see these five, six art threads and it's all just like, you know, post your art, retweet some, post your art, retweet some. And, you know, I, I kind of got bored of it. So I turned my art shares into games, which I thought was more fun and more engaging. And like in my art shares, I even did some giveaway ones as well, which were really cool. Um, Yeah, I did a giveaway art share, and it was it was like on points. So the more you retweeted, well, I think one retweet was like ten points, and then at the end of the day, I got everyone's points together, and I actually sent off some my match. And obviously, everyone, you know, some people did it for the giveaway, some people did it for support. But the amount of exposure of all the art in the thread got, because everyone was getting like 30, 40 retweets in one oh, art wow. thread, which was amazing. Yeah, literally. Like, some people I know have gotten like three, four. In this one, when I hosted the giveaway, because it became like a competition, people were actually, you know, supporting and finding other people. And each, like, nearly every art on that thread was getting like 30, 40, and it was amazing. Um, and you know it was a competition but some people actually got something good out of it so everyone won in that thread in the end no one really lost anything um but yeah i I'm, i think i'm known for my weird chair games to be honest but you know if people have fun and it gets them exposure then you know it's worth doing i think that's really interesting if you don't mind I will probably mm-hmm. for for the episode after after this one. I will probably try to dig up those threads and check the analytics of these people who got uh, this many retweets. I'm very curious as to if there's a spike in in followership after that kind of stuff. I think it will be very interesting to showcase and and perhaps that way we can, I guess, find out what <laughs> what the it hell the algorithm like wants. Uh, do you remember more or less when it was? February March. I think oh, good enough. I'll I'll check out around that. Yeah, I should page. bookmark my. I should really bookmark my stuff. But yeah, <laughs> it's okay. Right. That's that's actually that's super interesting. <laughs> I'm really excited to to check that out. How about? Mm-hmm. Do you have any opinion? Because this is something I would like to talk about with someone who is also an artist. Are you familiar with the idea of adulting? I've heard of it. I've seen a lot of people, young people, I, I guess, uh-huh. um, let's say 18 to 30, who mm-hmm. in general, they they start college, they start living alone, they start, uh, you know, learning what it means to be an adult and, and do things. 
like an adult would like you know get your groceries and paying the bills and worrying about rent and and uh, Mm -hmm. it's it's been on the decline thankfully but especially in 2018 i saw a lot of people coining the term adulting for when they had to go into adult mode like uh i want to be home playing video games but now i have to go adulting and go to the bank and I thought it was very interesting and thought it, it would be a nice topic of conversation when it comes to people who are young and also aspiring to be interp- entrepreneurs in their own business. Because I find that this tells you that people don't like being adults. They don't like the responsibility of having to, to you know, sustain themselves. They only want to do the mm-hmm. the fun stuff. And then when you do the, the adult stuff, it's boring. I, I wanted to, to know your opinion on... I guess I, I know this is not specifically art related, but I want to know your opinion as someone who who has changed country and and you know knows the experience of becoming independent. Do you think this adult stuff, this responsibility, brings you like freedom and comfort, or do you think it's a drag and and is that a good thing or a bad thing? What what are your thoughts? I'm an only child, mm-hmm. and. My parents have been very overprotective of me during my whole life. Mm-hmm. And um, how do I say this? They've, they've gone through some tough times. Um, and I've always felt that it was always my responsibility to make sure my parents are okay. I think I spoke about this to my page. Um, well, whoever follows me knows what, like about me moving out and all of that. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I had been living with my parents since well i've been living with my parents since last year to be honest because you know they went through a divorce and all of this and i felt it was my responsibility to look after them so i didn't i don't know i didn't really get time to adult until like my later adults it's embarrassing but i don't know i always thought i had this guilt on my shoulder to look after my parents as an only child um but things got rough at home so i did eventually move out I've been living by myself since February now. Um, with like roommates and stuff. And obviously at the beginning it was very difficult because I had to stop buying my own food. I had to start <laughs> cooking. I had to pay rent, which I've never really paid before because my parents didn't allow me to pay. I had to money manage and uh, be more financially what do you call it? Independent now? Yes. Which was kind of scary because I had to depend on myself. Obviously, when I was living with parents, I'd come, they would, be, they would leave money on the table saying, here, take this to work, you know, that, all those things. And now, and then I moved out and I didn't really have that anymore. So I had to start organizing myself financially and everything, which was kind of scary. I mean, embarrassing for a seven year old but you know um but yeah it it is scary and especially now with the how the economy is and everything i mean if you're like an adult even a teen and you find it scary i mean it is scary because you don't like even rent in london just a month for a tiny room is 700 pounds i mean i don't have to pay that thankfully but i really don't know how people do it to be honest yeah but yeah it is scary i mean i guess you do what you have to do to survive i guess do, do you find the, the responsibility of looking after yourself i see a lot of people don't like it and i understand why like you say it's scary and and you don't know what's going to happen but i don't i don't know why people don't feel like it's liberating that now for example i know this is, uh, uh, I don't know if I would cut this part out just because this is about you, not about me, but just to, to yeah. empathize a bit or something. I have, or I had relatively strict parents growing up. And mm-hmm. uh, if I were to be in a car crash, my first thought would be, oh, they're gonna, you know, you're they're gonna yell at me instead of worrying about the car crash itself. You know what I mean? And yeah. when, when you get your own stuff and you buy it and it breaks or, or the food spoils, you're like, ah, I paid for it, like, whatever. And it feels very liberating. Have you experienced yeah. that? Yeah, that's how I felt. Like, literally, the freedom the freedom was amazing because when I was with my parents, 
it became almost like a schedule. Every day it was the same questions. Every day the same thing would happen. I would wake up and text my dad I'm going to work. I'd come home and text him I'm home. I'd text him what's for dinner. You know, he'd come home. We, you know, I'd come home. He'd have his shower at a certain time. I'd have my shower at a certain time. It, it was always the same every day and it kind of got depressing to be honest and every time I had someone over I had to give cues in advance in case they're like family over and stuff and now that I'm by myself it's like yeah whatever just come over and it's like you know I have space just you know do whatever you want um you know if I want to buy something I'll buy something I don't have to like ask what's for dinner anymore I'll just make it even if it's just like cheese and crackers, you know, I'll just make it for myself. Um, but I, I do know what you mean. Like, it's very liberal. But. Cool. Yeah, it's a... Uh, I guess if I want to get preachy about it, for for people who might be listening who are who are just going through college or, or starting that separation, I guess the, the point would be, yes, you will have more responsibility, but hang in there because the, the independence is also amazing and a good thing so you know you get some you, you you get more responsibility but you get more freedom and that's ultimately what what makes us into new people or better people as we grow up yeah the freedom is the best bit because i my house when i was with my parents was like really small mm -hmm. and i had to stop playing with friends on like steam and stuff by like 10 and now I'm up until like 4 a.m. shouting and no one really cares. So <laughs> yeah, I've also become because you know, people you know friends play until like 3 4 a.m. and then when it was me, I was like, oh, I have to get any boys, and they're like, yeah, but we need our team. And it's like, well, I have to go. I can't really, you know, they're gonna shout at me and stuff. Um, but yeah, now it's just like, no, whatever. I'm just up until 4 a.m. playing. So you know, I have more time with friends. Because everyone would used to come from like at work at like nine ten, and then I by nine ten I had to be off. So yeah, it was it was pretty strict. But now it's now that I have my freedom, it's so much worth it. Obviously, I still have messages from my dad saying, "Oh, you can come home. You don't have to pay rent. Why do you want to live by yourself? Why do you want to pay rent? I never made you pay any rent. I always prepared you food and stuff." And Obviously, being an only child and stuff, he doesn't really get the freedom. But yeah, I'd rather pay rent and have my freedom than have... I don't know, it was a bit claustrophobic in my house because there was so much on me being an only child. Right. But yeah, the freedom is amazing. <laughs> Great. Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, well, if you don't mind me asking, how old are you? 28. Sorry, 28? Yeah, I nearly forgot how old I was. I'm 28. Oh. Right, I ask you because... I mean, I don't know, maybe it's uh, it's uh, habits, but I'm 26, and even if I now can stay up until like 4 a.m., I find out I'm an old man because I don't want to. If I, I start like... If I do that, I wake up yeah, all groggy I and it sucks. Yeah, no, before I used to stay up until like 4 or 5, like I used to be, be nearly awake for 24 hours like stuff and I would have no problem but now it gets to like sometimes after work it gets to like 9 and 10 and like I don't anymore and you're just like blacking out at the PC and stuff and you're like no stay away for a little bit longer but your body won't let you yeah it's, it's getting old sucks <laughs> I guess I guess this is Everybody knew this except for us young people until we stopped being very young, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. I had no problem before, but now I just... By 10, I am out. Right. Well, it, um, I guess that would be it in terms of topics. I I really, really appreciate that you accepted to do this, and, and it was very enjoyable. Right. Is there anything you would like to promote? It doesn't have to be uh, specifically yours. We can we can just add it to the description as well. Is there anything you'd like to, to push? I did start a Patreon I want to start doing. Okay. I don't think anyone's joined yet, but I am offering a 
I will make art for this Patreon and it will be only for Patreon. I will not post it anywhere else. So if anyone wants to join for only like $3 a month, I think, yeah, for $3 a month, they can get, like, exclusive uh, group part for just them. And there will also be other tiers where I will send out merch to them. I assume it is patreon.com slash dparts as well? Yes. The link is also on my Twitter. Right. Well, thank you so much for um, for coming. And, and, I don't know, I hope you have uh, many more milestones to share with us in the future. I hope so too, thank you. Okay, I'll see you around, thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you for listening. This has been episode 2 of the Wizard Tower Art Podcast. Please remember to subscribe and hit the bell and all the things that YouTube wants us to do. Follow us on Twitter. There is now a link to our subscribe star in the description, but we're still waiting for that confirmation. It'll come, I'm, I'm a patient man. Until then, I'll see you around. Bye-bye.